Welcome back to our deep dive of Heaven's Vault, episode 20. Through the magic of backup saves, I rewound, and we're going to go ahead and see what happens if we look inside this building, rather than immediately going up to the barracks and getting um, uh, in trouble. I've gotten a few different um, decodes this time through, but uh, otherwise it's the same progression. Just a couple of different um, pop-ups, you know, different different words translated. Let's see whether we can get the robot to wait outside. All right, let's go do some secret stuff. Darkness. An enormous pit had been cut into the rock below. It must have taken days to do. Weeks, even. So the first time I played, this is what I did. I didn't go off and get distracted. Um, I was shocked to find that the game would let me just skip this. Seriously. That's kind of, kind of cool, I suppose. Uh, but that's the thing about these context engines. A lot of the times, so far, what we've seen is that a lot of the times what happens is it's a pass-fail situation. So it's not that I have a different approach. It's not that if I skip this, I get a different setup. It's, it's just that if I skip this, this doesn't happen. Uh, I think that that is a poor way to engineer things. Any tabletop GM can tell you um, pass-fail roles are not very interesting. It's okay for something like combat, where if you fail a roll, you just try again the next round. But for things like skill checks and stuff, just failing is very uninteresting. That's why most modern RPGs that aren't D&D, a failure doesn't usually just mean a failure. A failure usually means a complication or a partial success or something similar. And I think that a context engine can do that. Um, I think that a context engine would allow me to uh, make a, a situation which could, you know, if we skipped it, we'd learn something else. Or if we did it wrong, we'd do something different. Wooden walkways spiraled down, held together by ropes and luck. You could tell this place was built by Elbereffians. Now, she keeps talking about an eagle, digging up an eagle, how big these eagles are. And it's clear she's not talking about the same kind of eagle that I talk about when I talk about eagles. Unless, uh, unless this is a surprise, these characters are actually all the size of mice. Um, she must be talking about something a little different. So, I keep going over here to the edges to do searches for just random loot. Which is a little bit boring to watch, sorry about that. It's just that the first time through, I didn't find anything. I didn't look that closely. Um, but this time through I found a whole bunch of stuff just kind of lying in the dirt like a giant axe and stuff like that. So it's not a, it's never clear exactly where things are hiding in this game which is not... I'm not sure whether I like that or not because it's so much effort to actually walk around. So this giant pit, I can't help but be reminded of the pit that we found on the Withering Palace which I wasn't allowed to go in but I don't think that this pit has something alive at the bottom of it. Um, it certainly doesn't sound that way anyhow. So hold out or hold back. It's clearly stone and not and then a whoop, which probably means, um, well you can see that it's ascend, it's half of the ascend. So I guess it would be I guess it'd just be holdout stone. It doesn't seem right, though. It's fine. If it's wrong, it's wrong. So here is where we have found Yazzie's um, problem. Click, click. There we are. Bam, 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 bam. 
Bam, 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 bam. Let's just take a look in the pit. Well, so far, so good. So, what she says is that she's not going to cross this board. That's a shame, because I kind of want to get across. But... She won't let me go down. This is a recurring theme where she refuses to do the thing that obviously everybody wants to do. It's a huge... I mean, I understand it from a game dev perspective. It's a, a huge amount of effort to create all of that content. Um, but she comes off as someone with... Uh, you know, she, she comes off as a, a real wuss, which is strange. You know, She went into the Eye of the Cyclones. Uh, and she does all these these crazy stunts and she's not willing to go down there I mean if you take a look the pit doesn't really have any sudden drop-off when you're walking across that board uh, you could store it up with any of these other hundreds of boards or you could uh, you know uh, find another way across like going down the rope or whatever it's not it doesn't seem like this should be where the affair stops. But of course the affair here is um, they don't want you going down. And I don't know if you can. This is another one of the pits that I wanted to see whether I could go down. Oh! Okay, so the first time I played this game I just apparently wasn't persistent enough. Okay, never mind. Cool. Let's keep going. Ninja action. Oh, yeah, tease me. You'd think that, uh, I would have just a an ability to bring something with me. I've been using ancient artifacts to lever open crates. This place is full of tools. You'd think that I would just be able to um, use a hammer, tear up some boards. It sounds like there's somebody outside making noise. I'm not sure if you can hear that or not on, on my system here. So the first time I, um, first time I played this game, I didn't get down here. Uh, this time, uh, I got down here. Hooray! I wasn't sure if I wanted to rewind and tr try again, because it was, you know, 20 minutes of going through the same crap twice. But now I'm glad I did, because this is stuff that I never got to see. So I can cross the plank, I can go down the ladder. Uh, let's go ahead and cross the plank first. Boom, 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 bump, 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 bump. Easy as pie. What's with this super close up? There we are. Oh yeah, and this time through I actually traded something away to Tappy. Um, I just chose something less valuable and uh, actually traded it for that that lamp he keeps trying to give me. So we're looking at a map with the Iox spiral in the middle, and you can see that we've got a copyright symbol. So it's probably something to do with time and then space or whatever that means. Uh, Empresses, but you see that this is like just a, a thing here. That's not empresses. That's palace. There we are um, And then here's shall and then here is Ooh, this is much better than shall So this is the palace of the Queens, which is a little bit silly 
since the palace and the only difference between these words is that one of them has a, a land in front and one of them has a um, I guess this might be I forget what that word means rule or something okay so that can't be Queens what is it then Palace of Goddesses. So, if Iox is the palace of something, it's probably the palace of robots, or the palace of death, or something similar to that. At least according to what I know at the moment. Um, there's really no reason why the Empress would be enshrined on Iox when, uh, Iox when Iox is the only place that has robots. So, we've learned that the robots are basically immortal um, humans, you know, and so therefore it would make a lot more sense if they were the focus rather than some random queen or empress or goddess or anything because, I mean, that's kind of the point, right? They are, they are what, what, they're the, the breach in our understanding of reality. Everything else is different. Look at that, a boat. So this seems like it's inspired by um, a, a dig in Egypt. Uh, I can't say for sure because I haven't ever really looked into this very much, but in Egypt there was quite a dig and they uncovered this really cool ancient boat that was buried under the sands and they eventually rebuilt it and hung it up in a museum. Uh, and I can't help but think that this was like, oh, a boat in the sand. That will be a cool thing to put in. That's fine. Oh, no. I guess I made the right choice. Gosh, almost like it's a sail. Yeah. So that's probably the way back up. Let's not go that way yet. We want to go over here. Bum, bum, bum. Carry crystals to the skies. Who knows? Carry crystals from rather than towards. Um, and this is like snake. We're pretty sure it's snake. Well, then that would be the serpents. And this would be light and ruler. So maybe eye. Carry. Yeah, the serpent's eye, the hurricane. Cool. I sincerely doubt that uh, Renba would have left anything interesting here, but it looks like he left us a little bit of a toy. It looks like the crystals that he might have left us back on um, um, uh, Mersey. But they're not really giving us too much to work with. They didn't give me a close-up look or anything like that. It didn't look like one of those crystals when it was held in my hand, but it looks like that when they're in the box. Hmm. So, this ship was called the Sky Goddess. Well, you clearly have, because you're now looking at it. Let's see whether there's any more loot to discover over here. I think that's it for this ship. There doesn't seem to be any particular reason to close this hatch, um, but we'll be nice and close it.
Hmm. Whoa, that was a failure of an animation. I don't think there's anything else down here. I think that's... I think that's everything that we came here to see. Oh. <laughs> the lack of animations is definitely showing in this particular area. It's a little bit rough, but that's okay. All right, that was exciting. So now that we've found more of what was hiding away from us that we skipped last time, all we really discovered is that um, Renba discovered an ancient ship here, which led him out into the eye of the cyclones, which makes perfect, perfect sense to me because the serpent's eye makes sense that that's the cyclones. Um, so this led him to the first find that we found with the Emperor's crown. The question is, what led him here? It'll be a while before we can find that out, though, because we have to go and deliver these um, would-be pirates to, uh, to somewhere else. So, from here, the plot unfolds just a little bit differently than it did the first time around. The first time I came here in, in, on video, Yazi was with me when I went up this hill, and he immediately ditched me and had an argument and stuff like that. Let's see whether or not this ends up being the same exact thing, even though I'm coming a different direction. Of course it's a camp. A wonderful camera angle. And this is one of the not-so-great secrets of the current generation of games. Um, choices usually aren't choices. Usually you end up with the same result regardless of which way you choose. And that's just because I don't want to write, you know, hundreds and hundreds of branches. But uh, the context engine is... Um, is a method which might help to get us around, get around that particular barrier. Now notice that this time she said it nice and straight without gasping, because her health is full. That's a cute little touch. After this, no reply. Um, we could look around this camp, look for stuff here, um, but I don't know if the game will actually let me. Every time I have said something there, he's just immediately returned me to the ship anyway. So we'll see whether or not there is, um, you know, an option. Uh, I, I guess we won't see because I'm not going to go back and do that again. 
So, we are now back where we were at the end of the last episode. You can call this episode Wasted Space if you'd like, but we discovered a boat! A big boat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here since from here it's the same.